Good afternoon. It is uh, Sunday, March 8th. Happy International Women's Day. And it is the start of the Femme Fantel Readathon. So I'm going to be starting another vlog. I'm very excited to be vlogging this week. I thought it'd be really fun to do. Um, so I'm going to be vlogging throughout Femme Fantel Readathon. It's just going to be one vlog for the week. Um, but I wanted to at least start it today. Today's kind of busy. I planned this morning plans this evening, adulting during the day, so it's not the best day for reading, but I at least wanted to get started and open the vlog on International Women's Day to at least be able to say that um, and just kind of get this started. So my plans have changed ever so slightly from my TBR video. I'll be sure to link that down below. I was not clicking with the audiobook for Graceline, and so I just decided to listen to the audiobook for Amuse of Nightmares instead, which is my plan for this week. Um, that one's in my February wrap-up, which will be up by the time this is up, so I'll be sure to link that below, uh, where I talk about both Strange the Dreamer and Muse of Nightmares. Uh, but I just decided to go ahead and um, just listen, or sorry, not listen, read it physically. Uh, so this is Grace Lee by Kristen Kishore. This follows the niece of the king, and she, in this world, there are different graces or abilities, and she has a grace for killing. And so she's basically kind of the assassin for her uncle, essentially. Um, that's kind of the setup. So yeah, I just wasn't clicking with the audiobook, so I'm just gonna read this physically and see. I was enjoying the story, so I think reading it physically is gonna be a lot of fun. I got about a quarter of the way through, I think. Um, and I have hope that for the second and the third book in this series, I think they're two companion novels, I have hope that the audiobooks will be fine for that because I think they just stick to one narrator instead of doing, and it's a different narrator I think, um, but I think they stick to one narrator instead of the way they were trying to do the full cast narration that didn't quite work for me. So who knows, maybe I'll be able to continue these on audio, but I want to read this as my main physical read for the week and then the rest of them I think are the same plans as my TBR. So as I was adulting today, I was listening to the audiobook for the second book in this series, Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Mian. This follows Lei, who was kidnapped from her home to be a consort to the Demon King. And um, it's about her uh, coping with that, trying to escape her relationship with the other women. Um, it's, I actually really enjoyed this and I listened to this on audio so I wanted to continue. So this will be solely something I listen to on audio since I don't have a physical copy of the second one. I kind of want to see, I've heard mixed things about the second one. Like part of the danger of listening to so many reviews of a book is like I don't want to go in assuming I'm not going to like it or anything. Um, but I, I started the audio book today as I was running some errands. So we'll see how that goes, but that is going to be my audiobook for the week. And then another thing that I will do a mix of audio and physical is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. Um, one, I'm participating in the Elderling Along, so this is going to be my way to go ahead and get that started. And I think I'm going to get the audiobook for this on Audible and kind of go back and forth. Once I'm done with the audiobook uh, for Girls of Storm and Shadow, it's not a terribly long audiobook, so once I'm done with that one, I think I will switch to this and do this as a mix of physical and audio, potentially. We'll see, we'll see how I feel about this one and kind of the best way I want to read this one. Um, but those are my plans for this week. I feel like that'll be a good mix of audio and physical for me to get through and hopefully come the end of next Sunday I uh, will be able to get all of those done. Another thing is I I want to continue um, I've I have Elantris on script now and so I'm doing I'm continuing with this and I, I don't want to like stop during this week I, I just I can't afford to do that I think time wise um, so if there's anything that's not a fantasy written by a woman that I listen to or read, it's probably just going to be continuing a bit in that. But otherwise, I'm going to be focusing on fantasies written by women. I will eventually, in a different clip, uh, figure out which books, you know, which prompts these books fit. But that'll be a problem for future Emily to resolve. So anyway, yeah, welcome to the vlog, and I will... Probably not check in again today, but I will check in 
throughout the week and probably a bit more next weekend as I hopefully wrap these up and have more thoughts on them. So yeah. Oh hey, it's Wednesday and I just wanted to give you an update on how reading this week is going. Um, so I'm not going to be checking in very frequently during the week. As I mentioned, my reading during the week is pretty consistently not boring, but like I can listen to an audiobook while I commute and during lunch and maybe I have a chance to read a little bit physically during the evening if there's not a bunch of other stuff I need to do, but otherwise I might get a chance to read a little bit physically before bed. And so mostly it's going to be me talking about what I have listened to on audio. So I did get to finish um, and was listening to this on audio, I did get to finish the second book in this series, Girls of Storm and Shadow by Natasha Young. Apparently she was initially wanting it to be a duology and the publisher kind of, um, and the publisher wanted it to be a trilogy and you know there were a bunch of people saying that they could kind of tell that she was stretching it out over more pages than maybe the story kind of was intended. And I could kind of feel that and I hope it wasn't me listening to some reviews and then just really focusing on that as I was listening to it. Uh, but I could definitely, I could definitely feel that. Um, it was pretty slow and th you know there's some things that happen but I definitely feel like it could have been very condensed and still kept still kept some of the the character work. There was some good character work in different parts of it. But I think she could have kept the main the main action points and some of that character development, that character development and that so they're traveling as part of it and that can just kind of get really repetitive really quickly and I mean you get to know these characters as they're traveling but like at some point it just gets repetitive and there are ways that you can kind of have that character development but still have it take less space than it did in these books. Um, and I, I think she could have condensed it down to some of those key major points. Um, trying to not say too much about the actual plot of it since it's the second in this series. I think, I think I'm just going to listen to the third one. I don't feel like I'm going to feel compelled to keep this series on my shelf probably. I'll listen to the third one just I'm still curious enough just to kind of see what happens and I feel like there's pretty little investment in just listening to the audiobook from my library when it comes out and so I'll probably do that and we'll consider donating this and seeing if I can find uh, a home of someone who's gonna just absolutely adore this story and I did enjoy this one uh, but am I gonna want to reread it? Am I gonna want to reread the series? So far, probably not. So I'm gonna start this over my commute the next couple of days. I haven't read a ton physically in Graceland, but this is my physical read. This is what I've just read for very brief periods of time before bed the past couple of nights. So I'm literally like maybe 25, 30 pages in. Oh hello, so it is Friday and I have listened to a bit more, actually a decent chunk, I'm almost 200 pages into Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I'm thoroughly enjoying this so far. One, I love the narrator, so the audiobook has definitely been a good route to go, so I'm glad I got that on Audible because I could see myself re-listening to these audiobooks. And the audiobook has also definitely helped, because um, this is kind of a slower classical like old school fantasy and you know I'd heard this from multiple people who had reviewed it too who kind of felt similarly that this is definitely a setup to a larger world and I can I can see the potential and I can see the payoff being really really high for not just this series but the entire set of series that make up the elderling realm uh, but this one definitely is a start to that world and um, developing that world and it starts with Fitz being six years old. Fitz is the bastard son of the prince uh, but he's a six-year-old kid when this starts and it, it basically just kind of follows his daily life as he's just kind of thrust upon uh, you know the court and his royal, like the royal side of his family, he's brought back to them when he's six years old and just kind of has to figure stuff out. And 
So it's just kind of about his daily life and he eventually, you know, eventually is kind of taught and educated and so it's about his education. He's eventually specifically trained um, to spy and be an assassin and kind of be stealthy and just the skills that he would need in service to the prince. And so, you know, it's kind of a slow start, but there's some political intrigue that's uh, that's definitely starting and you're just getting to know some of the characters and some of the people who are important to Fitz's life. So it's been really easy just to kind of dive into this world and, you know, it doesn't bother me so far that this is definitely a, a setup novel to kind of really get you integrated into this world. Um, I've just honestly had fun getting to know Fitz. I really like him as a character and I like following him and just I enjoy kind of seeing the the mischief that he can get himself into so I've had fun with this so far I really have I haven't been able to read much more physically in Grace Lane just again over the past couple of nights I think since I last checked in I've read a little bit so I think I'm like 50 pages in now yeah I'm 50 pages in now so still enjoying it the 50 pages have been fun and I'm still loving Katza. But yeah, so it's mostly just been audiobooks for the win so far this week as per usual for me. So I am probably just gonna relax for a little while and read. I really would love to get some more of Graceline in. Um, so I'm probably gonna do that. It's like, what, 7, 50 shots, almost eight. And so, and I've had dinner. I just kind of chilled and watched a few booktube videos. So I'm probably honestly just going to chill for a little bit and read, not for too long though, because it's almost Saturday and I just had a chill morning food coffee booktube video is pretty much my standard Saturday morning um, so I'm gonna get some reading done soon I I didn't read as much as I wanted to last night I got 50 pages farther into Grace Lane so I'm around the hundred or so page mark still really enjoying it um, so I'm probably gonna read some of that just like curl up on the couch and read some of that probably is is my next step. I do have some errands to run today, so I think while I run errands I'm going to listen to more of the audiobook of Assassin's Apprentice. Also I forgot to mention, <laughs> and I just think it's a little bit funny, that both of these stories involve a relative of the king or some prince or some person in royal or political power. Uh, both of these involve a relative of those people who are being train to kill for them or do kill for them or fight for them in some way shape or form <laughs> and our young kids or at least start out as young kids who do that so i think it's kind of and they both have a very old school just classic fantasy style and vibe to them <laughs> so far i'm not having trouble differentiating between the two or remembering what's going on in each individual story and I hope that that continues because um, these are also both series that I would like to continue soon and so I can kind of see myself reading multiple books in these series at a very similar time. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to keep those two stories straight. But anyway, yeah, I'm probably just going to chill and read some of Grace Lane for a bit and then run errands. So, yeah. <laughs> So it's a while later, uh, ran a bunch of errands. So to update on my reading, I am now, what, 225-ish pages into Grace Lane. And I can just tell that Katza is gonna be one of my favorite characters of all time, certainly one of my favorite female characters, but probably just one of my favorite characters of all time. I love her. She's graced with fighting and with killing. Um, so like 
there's also that aspect to her being a badass, but she also just has such a quiet power and is so good at reading people and reading situations and kind of knowing the best way to approach that, even if that's not her needing to physically fight or kind of have that be her source of power. Um, she's also just very cunning and smart, even for such a young girl, and just kind of knows what power she needs in a situation in order to do the right thing. And I also, while I was running some errands, listened to more of Assassin's Apprentice. So I'm about 250 pages into this. So halfway-ish mark. And I'm also just adoring this. I mean, Fitz is so much fun. There's more politics starting to be involved. And, um, you know, he's continuing with his training. And yeah, it's just, it's just a lot of fun. Oh, hey. So it's later on Sunday and I am checking in because I'm not going to be able to read for too much more today. It's late in the afternoon. I basically have been either cleaning my apartment or on the couch reading Graceland. And so I've got like 150 pages left of Graceland and I think I've got about the same amount left in Assassin's Apprentice. And yeah, so I've got plans tonight. I'll be able to listen to a bit of Assassin's Apprentice, um, but I don't know how much more I'm actually going to be able to read tonight. And again, I have also, again, a little bit more cleaning to do. I'm going to be spending a lot of time in my apartment coming up. I'm really, really fortunate that I can telework uh, coming up, and so I want to have a clean place to do that from. <laughs> so finally doing some cleaning that I've been putting off. Um, so that's also been a decent portion of my day. Uh, but I'm probably just going to extend this for just one more day because I think I'll be able to hopefully finish both of these um, over the course of today and uh, Monday. So I'm just gonna, yeah, just one more day and we'll, uh, we'll see if I can get both of those finished and I can give final thoughts on both of them. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, talk to you later. <laughs> hey, so it's Friday, March 20th. Um, I actually finished the readathon a little bit late. On Tuesday, I finished all of the books, um, but it's been a busy week. It's been a weird week with everything going on and transitioning to telework. Um, it's also just some personal stuff. So the result of all of that is that it is Friday and I'm just now wrapping up this vlog. It's going to be a hot mess of a vlog, but whatever. Hopefully I can get this edited tonight and posted tomorrow morning and just call it good. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to go as much into description. I think I described a synopsis of all of these earlier on. Um, so I'm just going to kind of wrap up my thoughts on the three books I was able to read starting the 8th and then ending this past Tuesday. Um, and that was Girls, A Storm, and Shadow, the second book in this series by Natasha and Young. And um, this one I listened to on audio. I, I do enjoy the audiobooks. Um, I think that's been a fun way to go for these. The second book was definitely very different than the first. Like, it was definitely very, very slow, and you could kind of tell that, or it would make sense um, that she wanted this to be a duology and instead was told to spread it out over three books, because um, the second book definitely could have been, I think, condensed quite a bit and put just into whatever the next book is. Um, you know, some things happen. There's some, definitely some interesting character development, but overall, would I have finished it if I were reading it physically instead of listening to the audiobook and able to kind of get through that relatively quickly. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Am I still going to listen to the third one on audio to kind of wrap up the series? Probably. Um, so not like a new favorite or anything. Uh, not a bad book, just felt so different from the second one that it was just kind of a weird transition in the second book. Um, next book, however, was fantastic. I absolutely loved it. I think I was some hundred pages, maybe, away from finishing Grace Lane by Kristen Kishore. Katza is my everything. 
Um, I love her spirit. I love everything about her. <laughs> um, so she is graced with fighting, but uh, kind of comes to realize that that doesn't define her as a person and kind of realizes how to integrate that knowledge into who she is. And I think she grows a lot over the book and I love seeing that journey. I, I think she just has such a great quiet strength about her that is such a cool contrast with the grace that she actually has um, and her ability to kind of fight. I, I just, I love her. I don't know, she's she's forever going to be a friend of mine. Um, and I don't think it's mentioned on the page, but she definitely, the way she relates to the romantic interest in the story, it's a very small part of the story, but the way that happened and the way that's written, it would make sense if Katz is demisexual, so I'm like, girl, relatable struggles. Anyway, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if that one ended up in my favorites of the year. Wouldn't be surprised, we'll see. Um, I also finished, uh, mostly listened to it on audio, but there were parts that I was listening and physically reading at the same time. That is Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb for the Elderlyne along. And this one I enjoyed. Uh, it was definitely fun to listen to the audiobook. I love the narrator. I think he was definitely a really good choice for narrating these. Uh, the writing style is super formal which, and it's just like a very classic old school fantasy. Like, I think these both kind of had that same old school feeling, which I think I mentioned. Um, but I think the writing in Grace Lane is just much less formal and maybe that's kind of slightly less consistent with the feel, or some people might feel it's less consistent with the feel that they might be going for. But I, I don't tend to, or I don't tend to prefer very formal writing styles. It just kind of takes me out of the story a little bit especially when you're talking about a young kid. And it's not like him as a young kid narrating his life, like he's older and kind of telling his story. But it just feels weird <laughs> to be talking about a kid in such a formal way. I don't know. Um, so it wasn't like my favorite style of writing, but it definitely was just a fun world to get into. It's fun to get to know Fitz and you do just come to really adore, or at least I came to really adore him as a character. Uh, I love his connection with animals. Got me. It got me. <laughs> um, and yeah, there definitely are some, some rough scenes with animals, so be forewarned. Um, but I love his connection with animals. I just love him kind of growing and exploring his abilities and kind of trying to figure out how to navigate the political uh, situations that he's in. And yeah, it is definitely kind of a slow, and I got the feeling for this a little bit um, kind of as I was going along, uh, but it definitely, like it definitely picks up and there are some things that happen towards the last part of the book. Um, like since when I last talked about it. But overall it definitely is a setup to a larger world and you kind of figure out the players and figure out the kingdoms and figure out what's going to be happening and with the Traitor series, the, the Redship Traitor series. Um, so it's just kind of a good introduction to everyone and getting to know Fitz and getting to know the politics of the world. So it's, it is a setup book. Um, so, you know, something to keep in mind. Um, but I just had a fun time listening to this, and I'm excited to continue on with the series. So, overall, I feel pretty good. It was honestly a nice escape to read just some fantasies written by women. Like, it was just cool to explore these worlds, it was cool to just get out of my head for a little bit. Oh, note from slightly later on Friday, Emily, I realized that I didn't actually look at the prompts for the readathon and try to figure out how many of them I actually accomplished. So I just double checked the prompts. I'll be sure to put an image here so you can kind of follow along with what I'm talking about. Um, so the first one is, did you read a queer book? Um, and for sure, uh, Girls of Storm and Shadow definitely counts for that one. None of them were middle grade. None of them were retelling. Uh, Woman with a Weapon, <laughs> I think Graceline definitely counts for that one. Uh, standalone, kind of. I mean, Graceline is technically in a series, but it is a self-contained, like it's, there are multiple books in the same world, but I think my understanding is that they're not a series and they're just companion novels and that each is kind of a self-contained novel. 
So I'm going with yes on that one with that understanding. Um, new to you author Robin Hobb and Kristen Kishore were both the new to me authors. Um, black Asian or minority ethnic author um, Natasha Nyang is, I believe, at least part Chinese. I remember, I think at least part of her family is from China and that she grew up in Malaysia. But um, yeah, definitely Natasha series for sure uh, because both Girls of Storm and Shadow and Assassin's Apprentice are both in series. Historical setting, I think Assassin's Apprentice definitely counts for this as does Graceline. Non-human protagonist. There are definitely some major characters or side characters in Girls of Storm and Shadow, like there are different groups of people, like demon class that are like part animal or have animal characteristics or full animal characteristics, and then you know a group that's half human, half animal, and then a human class. And so there's a, a good mix of people um, in the group that she has, and people that they're fighting. Uh, there are definitely a lot of non-humans in this world. So we'll count that. Uh, YA for sure, I think um, Graceline and Girls of Storm and Shadow are both YA. And adult uh, would be Assassin's Apprentice is an adult series. Back to the other clip. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this hot mess of a vlog. Uh, but I'm a hot mess of human being, so it makes sense. And yeah, I'll see if I want to vlog um, the week of fairy loot reading or how I want to do that. I, the original goal for, the original goal for kind of drawing those week of themed readings is to kind of do a vlog to go along with them. So we'll see if that happens, um, but at the very least those are my next reading projects, so. Yeah, again, thanks for watching. I'll be sure to link everything down below. Be sure to subscribe for more bookish content, and I will see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye.